Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today is the sixth and final in our series on Reveal.js, the HTML presentation framework. If you haven't watched the previous ones, go ahead and look at those. I put them all on a playlist as well, and they'll be linked in the description. Uh, now, today we're going to look at animating individual elements on a slide, how to auto-animate between slides, and then how to let your presentation play by itself, print the thing as a PDF, and then distribute the presentation when you're all ready for it to go public. Okay, so we've got a lot to cover, but thankfully the documentation is so helpful, I'm basically going to end up walking you through what they say and kind of explaining things uh, in my own terms. Hopefully that will be helpful for you. And I mentioned last time that the way you animate things on an individual slide is with fragments. So let's look at fragments first. Whenever you add the class fragment to any element on a slide, it will automatically fade it in. That's the default. So you'll notice down here, this one's got a fragment. I click and it fades in. This next one's got a fragment, but it actually also specifies what it should be. And it should be fade out. So the next click will actually fade that one out. The next one has a fragment that's called highlight red. And if I click that, you see it highlights it red. Next one's fade in. And then the next time I do a fragment, it'll fade that one out. So as I fade this one up, as it slides up, the one up above should fade out. So if you have fragment, then you can add some kind of name or effect to it. Down here, you see all the different ones you can use. So face up, fade down, or fade up, fade down, a fade right, grow, shrink, strike. All of these are options for you. Now you can actually nest them too, and this is when it gets really powerful. And basically using a single span tag, rather than having to duplicate this multiple times and switch them in and out, I can say, hey, start by fading this in. Next time I click over with my keyboard arrow, then highlight it red, and the next time, fade it out. So watch this. I click here or use my keyboard arrow, then it turns it red, and then it fades it out. Now by default, the order you put the elements is the order the fragments will fire. So you see here, this one, then this one, then this one. But you can actually specify the fragment order with data-fragment-index, and then put whatever index you want. So this would go first, then second, and then finally third. And you see if I come down here, that's exactly what happens. Um, whenever any of these fragments happen, it actually does fire an event, just so you know. So you might be able to access that if you want to do something with that in JavaScript. But um, just so you know, it does actually uh, fire an event, dispatch an event, and you'll see that through multiples of the things that we look at today. Okay, so that's fragments. Next, I want to show you how to auto-animate. Auto-animating is nice because it kind of takes a lot of the work out of transitioning from one slide to the next. If you want to do some more advanced techniques without a bunch of extra CSS. And you can auto animate a bunch of stuff um, like font size, position, color, line height, all this kind of stuff. But all you'll do is you want to make sure that you have a similar tag. So here I have an H1 and an H1. And then I'm just going to change the styling on it. And by adding data-auto-animate to both of these sections, as soon as I go to the next slide, it'll actually auto animate to that. And you may want to change around the background or the slide transition. If you're like sliding, that auto animate doesn't really do a whole lot because it just looks like a new slide. But assuming you have just a fade or no transition at all, this auto animate will basically make it look like you're still on the same slide and will just adjust the styling, obviously. You can also do movement animations here. And you see that uh, here displayed for you. So you've got H1 and H1 and an H1. So you've got all three of these. And you'll notice that you're not adding any CSS. So if I come down here, I go one, and then it automatically transitions. So this is the first slide, this one up here. This next one basically switches to this immediately. And then the next time I click, it actually goes straight to the animation. It moves it up. So that's cool. So in other words, this animation isn't animating. It's these two that are animating. Just by adding this, you don't even have to add CSS. It'll figure it out that this needs to slide up because these share the same tags and the same text content, and they both have data-auto-animate. And it tells you how the items are matched. Basically, it's going to try to guess, and it's going to guess using the tags that you use, so like two H1 tags. And it'll also guess based on the SRC elements for iframes, images, videos, things like that. Now, if you want to say, hey, let me tell you which things should be tied together, you can add this data-ID and then provide an ID, and that will override the automated um, sensing of it, where they're trying to guess which thing should be auto-animated. So assuming you have this tag or this data attribute on, you can now just say, hey, this div and this div 
are the same, so I want you to animate between them when I move sections. And you see here they've got inline styling, so if I move to the next one, it'll auto animate, and uh, that's kind of nice. You have to write just a little bit of inline CSS, and that's it. Now there are a bunch of settings for easing, for the duration, delay, all that kind of stuff. You can also um, move in and out of sections to kind of restart those uh, data IDs if you want to, and I'll let you play around with that if you want to. This section here explains that, and also he shows you here that it does also dispatch an event. Now below here they give you an example of animating between code blocks, and the important thing is basically that they have line numbers, and again you're using that data-id. And the cool thing is it just looks like you're swe sweeping down further down into the document that you're showing, um, and it does all the hard lifting for you. It also shows you here between lists, just by adding this data-auto-animate, it's adding in these two, and it should just slide up, and those two jump right in. They also discuss this advanced state attributes, and the basic thing here is that you can take their automatic animation and add your own custom CSS to it. So if you want to play with that, uh, there's where you would look. All right, so we've looked at fragments, we've looked at auto-animating between different slides. Now let's look at letting your deck play automatically. This auto slide section tells you how to do that. You see down below here, we've just set in the initializer here an auto slide of 5,000, which would be five seconds. So 5,000 is 5,000 milliseconds. And then this one has looping set to true, which means it'll jump back around. This might be good if you're using this for like a, a bulletin board somewhere or something like that. Let's say you've got an office that you just want some information being thrown up on. This would be an easy way to just let that auto loop through. You probably also want to disable these controls and some other things, but I will leave that to the config options that I showed you, I think, in our first, first video. Now, one thing to, to note is if you set this auto slide, when you click these arrows, it'll actually pause it. And if you want to change that, you can just add this to your config options, and then it won't do that. It'll actually just let it keep running, even if you try to move ahead to the next slide. Now, when you initialize this and you add this auto slide, it does have you put the amount up here, 5,000, but you can also change that on a slide-by-slide -slide basis. Oops, sorry, here on the slide timing. So you can just set what individual slide should be here. Now, if you have vertical slides, you may not want to actually go down the vertical slides. When you're auto-animating, you may just want to stay on that top layer, and you can do that with this auto-slide method. And again, this fires an event that you can access in JavaScript or whatever. All right, last thing is, uh, before I show you how to export this or uh, publish it, is this PDF export. And basically, if you just add print PDF, this question mark print PDF to your document up here. So let's say I come over this way. This is the one we've been working on. I add this. It actually stacks up all your slides just like this. And then you can just use the normal print dialog, so like Command P on a Mac or Control P on a, C, uh, on a PC. And then you've got other options. Let me jump over back over here. Um, so you can say, hey, I want to always see the notes when I print. You can add this to your config options uh, down, let's see, this way right here, uh, like I showed you in that first video. If you want to make sure that there's paid numbers, make sure to enable those before you go to print. And if you want to say, hey, I only want one page per slide on PDF, you can do that as well. By default, uh, all fragments will print on their own pages. So if you have like 10 animations of bullet points coming down, those will all print as separate slides. You may not want that, and so you can say PDF separate fragments false, and just add that again uh, over here like that. Okay, so um, there's a bunch of different ways. You can actually also use deck tape with command line tool if you want to export it that way, um, but I'll leave that to you. Okay, the last thing to note here is if you come over here, this gulp file has uh, a bunch of different options for it. You see this is just the one that came default. And if I jump over to my package.json, we've been using gulp, uh, let's see, gulp serve, this start, npm start, to run gulp serve. We can also run gulp build, which will produce a more minified version. So let's come over here and we'll do this. So I, I am in here, I'm in the right directory. So I'm gonna write npm run build rather than run start. And you see here, it's actually gonna build this and we'll minify it and do a bunch of other things to make it kind of more compact. Okay, and you see it added a bunch of stuff to this disk folder. This is what I would use if I was actually going to publish this somewhere on a site. So this is kind of how you'd finalize the project and get it up somewhere if you want to put it on uh, some website somewhere. All right, well, hopefully this was helpful. I know there's a bunch of things we didn't get to, like slide numbers and uh, some of these events. 
some more advanced elements, how to stack multiple presentations on the same page. But uh, you can see there's a bunch you can do with Reveal.js, but the basics are fairly simple, easy to get started, and it's kind of fun to play with. If you like these kinds of tutorials where we're going over one element in multiple shorter videos, let me know. I also really like doing the long tutorials where we do one single project because it gives me a chance to explain a bunch of different concepts in kind of a real life scenario. But hopefully this was also helpful for you. If you like these kinds of things, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.